even for guitars, that song has this electric guitar part. <laughs> in the chorus, I, I can't get it. And I just gave up. It's a funky one. He's not perfect. <laughs> well, it's, it's very syncopated and it's complicated, and then the other guy could do it. I don't have to do it. <laughs> Thank you. She's sticking up for me. That's true. That's what the wives are for. When you voice and your hands are doing something different, is challenging. Right? Yeah. That's true. But I think kinetic memory, muscle memory is like yeah. key. Because the more that your muscle memory kicks in gear, that means your mental capacity is going to be elsewhere. Yeah. And um, that's why we practice so much. Yeah. And, and, and just a reiteration on that, the memorization of your music allows you the opportunity to connect with the Lord. That's why I push memorization. Memorization. It's just better. It's just better. So now you're actually leading in worship instead of surviving worship and hoping people are following you to God. <laughs> so we, we don't like survival worship. We like actually entering into that place. Yeah. Um, so, it depends on what instrument on. Uh, so, acoustic guitar, a lot of the material I'm able to, I, like I got it down, yeah. but some of the um, uh, playback or multi-tracks tracks pop in different chords um, at different points. So, you have to pay attention. Instead of doing the same three chords in the same sequence for every chorus, it actually switches it up the third chorus. And if you're not, if you're not paying attention to the chart, you'll miss that. So um, you can either spend a lot of time memorizing that that's coming, uh, so I'll have to pay attention. Um, the confidence monitor is a super big crutch, but um, you guys have not implemented it yet, but if Caleb is so led to implement it. Mm -hmm. um, we had it for a time. Yeah, we kind of run our screen back there. Yeah. How things are wired. Yeah. Did we're you did you have did you have it connected to Pro Presenter where the chord chart was changing with the playback track? Oh, we did not have the chord chart. We so yeah. that you need full tracks for. So what basically what happens at Vero, which is a crutch, is that confidence monitor has the words and has the chords above the words, oh, and you so actually good. see the different chord coming uh, before you get there. So. Um, it's been super cheaty easy. <laughs> Until it messes up. Until it messes up. This is a point. And then there's, there's one glitch in multi-tracks that we, I won't get into, but there's one glitch that has to do with the phrase that's come or the section that's coming next that's not listed. You know, so, you know why? Because they didn't set up ProPresenter correctly. Oh, I did for my you, you figured it out? Good. Then you can go talk to them and fix it because it's horrible. Now, does, that still depends on the person with lyrics, right? No. Once you push play, so the, lyric got, the lyric person, they don't even have to. Like, once you start worship, and if you have everything um, mapped out, you don't have to touch it. If, you use, it if you use full tracks. Yeah. Because that's the one that moves right. by itself. Yeah. But, okay. but that's also with, well, guys, play, that means pieces, that the, the guys, whole and if yes. you fall behind, um, that kind of Full thing. tracks. That's yeah. You're basically, yeah. you're playing with a recording. Yeah. yeah. So you can actually, I think, without buying any songs, if you subscribe to the first level, you can get the guide and the click for free without buying into it, which I think you can connect that to the lyrics. But I, You can, yes. Um, That's what I thought you were talking about. Yeah. You, you can, and you just have to chart out your arrangement. Yeah, but... Program the keys and all but, that. But all of that is... You can get those up, like you can buy, buy those too. Yeah, you can. So they're MIDI cues that talk to Pro Presenter. Super sneaky. It's awesome. It really helps. But um, I wouldn't rely on it. But you can't. You, again, you can't rely on it. That's. So, uh, you need to know your stuff question, for the. Do you use Planning Center? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, go. <laughs> um, just a real quick question. You keep saying the word memorize. Yeah. Right. And so, 
Can we unpack that just a little bit? Because there's, I think there's different levels. For myself, when you say memorize, I'm in the car, I got a set list, I memorize the songs. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. But then when I sit on my drums, hmm. I realize that I memorize the song, but I still don't know the parts because I didn't practice with my instrument. Yeah, so that's, that is, a drummer is memorizing um, the, the arrangement of the song, and in that arrangement, the drums are doing different things. Yep. So you could, you, know, you could be playing a hi-hat rhythm, and then on the next verse, there's a totally different rhythm going on to bring another dynamic to the second verse. Right. So you've got, you got to kind of listen to what the original is doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody can fake it and turn it right. simple. But for but, you, I want to ask you, like, as a guitar player or, or, or a piano, do you see a significant difference when, like, like you know a song in your mind, you listen to it a bunch in the car, or oh, yeah. wherever you are, but then when you, oh, like, yeah. what about theory to application? Like, then you sit down, is it like you sit down with the actual instrument and then you yeah. apply what you've memorized? Yeah, yeah, for me, listening to a song will not help me memorize. I have yeah. to sit and sing and play it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I have a general idea. Like, we're learning Bless God right now, we're going to do it with the choir. And I sort of know it, I sort of know the words, but I don't, I don't think I memorize it. I think some people have a, a, the type of mind and memory that yeah. they can memorize a song and sit down <laughs> and, and, you know, like Brendan saying, it's, it's a four, four and four song, mm -hmm. kind of get it. But then, you know, especially when you're going to a double bridge, a chorus, these transitions, um, I, you know, I feel like I just, I just wanted to know what, what you mean by memorizing. Yeah, I could memorize like no cards. Mm -hmm. Then, like, I want to, yeah. I want the muscle memorization. Yes, muscle memory, and that's yeah, yeah. You you hit it. And for me, on electric guitar, electric guitar stuff is is usually pretty mapped out. Uh, so I have to actually go find the part and memorize it. So I'm not staring at anything. I just, I've played it so many times, I'd know what part's coming next. And, and I, I would say this too, depending on the library that you're working from in your context, if you have 50 songs as opposed to 20 songs, yeah. you're not gonna be able to like, Yes. Yeah, and that's and when you're playing acoustic guitar or even piano, you can you can revert to some basic downbeats of chords if you're kind of having trouble where the song goes. Like I can revert to the one and five on a guitar and just strum that, like I said, and my brain pops back into gear wherever the song is at. But um, uh, yeah, drums are pretty meticulous. I'd say electric guitar is pretty meticulous. Piano parts, when arranged, are meti meticulous. I, I, with this new era that we're in, like, you know, I'll get a set list maybe four days prior. I, I practice a lot, like, over and over and over again for that one yeah. set. And I know not everybody has the time to do that, but that's how you are going to feel prepared yeah. when you come. If it's like checking planning center an hour before, before you show up, I mean, that's yeah. not going to prepare you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And remember, we're going to go back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah. We're bringing God our best. Let's bring him our best. And that means uh, through preparation as much as possible in the scheduling of life. Yeah. 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 I'm glad you said that because in my mind I'm mapping it out. Like, I think there's a, a real big difference between practice and rehearsing. Like, I don't want to practice while I rehearse. Yeah. Practicing while I'm rehearsing, I don't know. Yeah. And then, yeah. then I'm then I'm anxious, yeah. and then I'm worried, and yeah. then definitely not worshiping the Lord because I'm focused yeah. on that. But then I yeah. can't do my best. For sure. Yeah, you you're just doing the best, and you know, you know, because your conscience will tell you that I prepared or I didn't prepare, <laughs> and you know it. You may not verbally say it, uh, but we all kind of mask it when we get here. <laughs> and just try to muscle, muscle through it sometimes. So, um, I mean, there's times where I fail in my preparation and Kim can see it. <laughs> I mean, as a part of life, I'm just saying, yeah. there's always yeah. exception, but for the habit of 
Yeah. And we, we know the Lord's faithful. He doesn't show up even when we're not there. Yeah. We don't want that to be standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, planning center helps. And yes. I don't mean to put, I'll put you on the spot, Caleb, but no, how, uh, how in advance are the songs prepped for? We generally are getting them out Tuesday afternoon prior to practice Thursday and service Sunday. Good. So you guys have a full practice on a Thursday. We do. Oh, that's oh, that, right. Yeah, that's Six amazing. Six to eight two hour practice every Thursday. Yeah. And normally, normally the, the plan is songs are out by Tuesday afternoon so that for lyrics we can get them in the computer yeah. and um, the team can be practicing. Yeah, that's good. So I, I've done reasonably well past, that's uh, better than most churches. past three to four months yeah, yeah, to get them Tuesday night yeah. for sure. And funny enough, like the most accountability I have on that is the lyrics guy. I have a guy who puts in our lyrics, and if they're not in the computer, he's also my father-in-law. So <laughs> <laughs> so, you better keep Tuesday, him happy. Tuesday night, my father-in-law is calling me, yeah. where are the songs? Where are the yeah. songs? Oh, and I forgot to send yes or tomorrow's. Yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> this, week, <laughs> this week I called him in advance. I said we have a guest team. I got the lyrics. Don't worry. About okay. That. Okay. <laughs> Good. But but Tuesday night I had a text. Yeah. Hey, where's, the, where's the lyrics? That's, that's really funny. But that's great that you have a full practice. Yeah. Yeah. But that's to what Darren's saying, right? So songs are out Tuesday. It shouldn't be Thursday an hour before practice. Yeah. We're giving them the first listen. Building into Thursday, I've already practiced yeah. so that I can rehearse that's great. and then polish. You yeah, know, that's that, and that's exactly right. And then the polishing comes as you're you're basically practicing as a team, not an individual. So that's good. We need and to keep for those of you who serve Wednesday nights. You just know that's a work in progress. You know, <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's not nearly it's as our here. Right, right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Our gear, exactly. but, you know. That's that's <laughs> the night the Holy Spirit's got to do a little, little extra. <laughs> yeah. a little extra. <laughs> progression and that's a beautiful thing it's when you start going backwards <laughs> as a team that's that's not good so I, I, I think Jonathan you pointed out bringing God your best is really important because we all hold a very important role in how people connect with God through worship and music yeah. and people will leave a church over music or go to a church because the music is great and they sometimes will talk about that as much or more than the preachers how good is this message or how accurate so it's a, not that it's as important but people's yeah esteem it as a quarter yeah. sometime. And so yeah. if it connects people to God and, and through excellence and worship and then they stay and hear a great message because they're now connected with the great yeah. help that they're getting this it's, yeah. it's a win win. Yeah. But yeah. If, if it's sloppy and they're hearing it mistakes and it's like, yeah, wasn't that great? That other church that we tried out, they had really good music. Let's go back yeah. there. You know? Yeah. You know those conversations now. There there yeah. is. There is. And and uh, two things are talked about when people go home to Sunday lunch and dinner. The worship and the message, and that's the subject around the table. So, um, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man. And if you if you drop your guitar on stage, yeah. they talk about that. Talk about it for days. Our guest worship will almost be talking about it. Oh boy. Thanks for telling us that, Caleb. For sure. We'll yeah. show it later. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll, we'll definitely go back. Um, uh, your name again. David. David. Yeah. Is there a key that is considered the most comfortable key for, for the congregation? And is that something that the worship team considers, or is it more what the team is most comfortable mm -hmm. playing? Um, or for that song, or whatever. So how, how does that dynamic work? Okay, 
Songs, songs are different. <laughs> now I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Caleb has a very high voice, <laughs> and people. <laughs> um, there is no one key. There is no one key. Uh, so, and then we we have this modern style of writing that starts the song really low, and then jumps an octave and goes high. Yes. So. Um, <laughs> So for some, that's extremely frustrating. For me, I don't octave jump, and I'm not, I don't claim to be a great singer. Um, I survive. Uh, Kim's a better singer, but she's not a big octave jumper. She, she, we were driving, in, uh, was it this morning or yesterday, and she said, um, if I wish for anything in my talent, I'd wish for a greater vocal range. And because it's that, a lot of our modern worship songs are written that way, and it's just hard. So. Every song is unique, and um, there is a range for um, uh, congregational singing um, that if you want to get technical, you could try to land the song in this range, but you can't pick a key signature and call it that. But on the piano, if you were, what are those notes? Um, it doesn't matter, but there is this little block of here's, here's section. This was just one chorus of a tag song. Super high. So, I mean, everybody kind of is different. I think more, more important than the key is the accessibility and singability of a song. Mm -hmm. I mean, lyrically and melody-wise. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's part of what we look at when we're, when we're choosing songs. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have to be true. We're fine with that. But is this going to be congregational? Kim speak into it. Kim is the primary architect to our worship sets that we do. And every time I suggest a song, it doesn't work. So she does it. <laughs> <laughs> Not all the time. I very rarely will introduce a song in Calvary. I think we did Gratitude before they even started it. But that's a song I knew that would, I knew it was going to be a song. So I am choosing from the library that's already there, the ones who introduce it. So that's number one. But number two, um, if I can't sing it, we're not going <laughs> to <not gonna> sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that ex like Kylie was learning extravagant like worship? That. <laughs> that song, it's very, uh, like the lyric comes in at weird places and it's just syncopatedly hard to sing. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just can't stand that. And if I can't stand it, the congregation's gonna you know, have trouble with it too. So, yeah. There's no like hard and fast rule at all. No. Thank you. 
uh, I think sometimes you have an opportunity to pray that through. Um, for instance, for tomorrow's set, Kim went online and looked up what Mark was teaching. Um, so there's a there's going to be two songs at the end of service. So what what's he teaching? Well, I'm, do you mean poetic in terms of like metaphorical? That's kind of yeah, more abstract, words, more words. It's like a hunt, like so will I. That's one that oh. for a while people were really into it, but it's very wordy and poetical, and it's yeah. just. Path of Sorrows, All Sons and Daughters, like st stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It's a lot more, yeah, metaphorical. Mm -hmm. What are they talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that, and that's, that's the thing. Drive them? Right. What? Uh, there's been a few songs. Sloppy White like Kiss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like if you, yeah, it should be accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, of course, I mean, we have all these. I know where it is. Songs, but yeah. Crazy Cup. You do a special. <laughs> All the poetic stuff, you know. That's a local coffee shop that does oh, like oh, open, open mic night group. stuff. <laughs> oh, gotcha. When, gotcha. And in youth group, I'd say, at least when we did youth worship, Pete was way more open to that kind of yeah. music versus Mark. <laughs> he liked it too. I think yeah. your pastor too. Also. Yeah. We did city. What was it? Citizens. The city of harmonic. No, city we harmonic. Did a lot of stuff by lot. them. Mm -hmm. A lot of. Do you remember Esther Lynn? He was very into Esther Lynn, yeah. Gunger, uh -huh. um, which, I mean, a lot of poetic style yeah. songs. Yeah. So, yeah. And just, be, I think, being balanced in your choice of songs and then looking at who you're ministering to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just who you're ministering to. Do you ever stick to, like, a theme when you're, like, when you pick songs? Like, do you ever stick to, like, a theme? Oh, like, for sure. All, all the songs? For mm -hmm. sure. And not, a, and not a tight, like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. let's say that... <laughs> We're gonna dance in the river. But it's worth a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there, there may be a winner. Uh, but I think our, our song coming out of the message. Um, well, really, when I read the passage, as Jesus is a high priest, I think of the Lord of the throne. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's, that's what came into mind, right? That doesn't, but that doesn't mean that's how you design a set. No, but the Lord speaks to you as you, it's like yes. you look at that passage, you look at what he's teaching on, it's like, oh, I want, there is a flow to the passage. Can worship speak into that sure. and go the same way? And of course, we all know we bathe everything in prayer. Mm. And there's a lot when we put together a set list. There's a lot of components, a lot of things that are running through my brain when we do a set list. Mm. Not just the passage, but the key flow, who's singing it, which what church are we at, what songs do they know? I try to look past YouTube's to see what songs. You She watches you guys. Don't worry. I'm just like, I just, I, what I'm doing, I don't even have the sound on. I'm just like looking at the lyrics to see what the songs are. There's a word. It's like, oh, that's not good. Online mixes are usually pretty tough. So there's, there's a lot of things that go into a set in my brain. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then some songs just, as you're playing through, they just naturally, you know, for me, great as I think. Um, point them to the Brooke Lidgard Wood um, school site. Yeah, if you, I mean, you can probably see on Instagram, like the creator online. Um, oh, uh, yeah. It's, you got to pay for it. But back in uh, St. Pete, I had more time. And <laughs> I paid the $20 for one month and I crammed it as much as I could. And she did a, we all know Brooke Lidgard Wood, right? Mm -hmm. What beautiful name. She's one of my. 
she did a, a class on worship leading, the role of the song, the role of the worship leader, the role of the spirit within worship leading. And I just like sat there and paused it and I just copied everything down that she said. Because um, it was really good. I would. The, the, the thing that sets Brooke apart um, is she is a deep thinker and has got a grasp on theology. So when she writes her music, it's, it's very, very thought out. And then she's such a good musician, too, on guitar and piano. And when you watch her talk through that, you're just like, I, I quit. I'm done. <laughs> if you notice, all the songs that she writes are very singable. Very. Because she's writing for the congregation. And that's what I, I really... Who's this? Brooke? Brooke, Brooke Liger, Liger Wood. Thousand Hallelujahs. What a beautiful name. Beautiful name. It's worth the pay and get a month and then cram. That's what she did. And I, 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 I eavesdropped when she did it. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 What is your feeling on Oh, I know what you're going to say. I, I, I think. I think. Go. Singing songs from a band, let's say the band is not theologically correct, but the song may be theologically correct. Okay, uh, go. <laughs> I knew that's where you're going. Our personal stance is the song stands on its own. Yeah. I'm not here to judge people's walk with the Lord or certain churches' theology. That, for me personally. So if the song is, is speaking truth, I think the majority of people, I think, the majority of people won't even know where the song originates from that are sitting in church. So if it stands on its own merit and it speaks the truth and it's, you know, architected well, it's... I mean, there's some hymns that have some questionable backgrounds as well. Yeah, so. yeah. But, and I know everybody has a personal conviction about that. That's not to say you should have the same one. I mean, that's just how we... There's, there's a church down the street in Vero that, um, you know, some of the folks there, and they, um, their board got together and said, we don't agree with the, um, well, I'm not going to go, but certain, uh, you know, the certain roots of the church, their theology, we're not going to do those songs anymore because of that. And you just took a chunk of tons of worship and threw it out the window and now you have to ask the question, okay, which organization is correct? So now you're sitting there and you're hunting church and Christian groups going, okay, what's your theology? And now you're just caught up in this like um, legalistic viewpoint towards everybody's perfect Christian box. And it, and it just, I heard that and I went, I'm so tired already. And I haven't even done anything. So um, there's no, yeah, so. Back to what she said, it's down on some merit.